out of the two, which one do you like? I think I like the dry the dew more because like I haven't tasted that in my mouth before. I've, I've had more like this. <laughs> I try to not make it sexual, but it I've been just trying happens to make like sexual, like, on No, I don't. <laughs> What's up everybody, we're back with another video. Today we're doing Lowell Part Dose. Feedback for the first one was super great and there's no shortage of places for us to check out in Lowell, and especially Cambodian restaurants, you know, we gotta hit them all. Since the last video, that was my first experience having Cambodian food and I've went out of my way to come to Lowell to eat yeah. Cambodian food since. It's good, right? All the spots we went to today are all mom and pop. Always, you know? always, that's what we're supporting. So hopefully we can give them a little more business and at the same time enjoy ourselves, feed our friends. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Well, we back. How you been? Doing all right, man. Why we at Red Rose? This is definitely a little staple because right in the, the heart of Cambodia town, this is a go-to spot, especially for me, top five for sure. And it's a classic one too. It's yeah. not like new, gentrified. You can tell family-owned. To keep it old school, it's all about the food over here. What's the point of looking all fancy if the food sucks? I know, right? All right, so Red Rose is actually the first Khmer restaurant I ever went to in my life. I, I had a homie in high school when I moved from New York that was Cambodian, and he drove me all the way out here. So it was the first time I ever had Khmer food was like at this restaurant. There's some places people go to in the morning some places people go to for dinner what do you like put red rose it'll probably be like a saturday morning where they usually hung over off hennessy so this is like the go-to spot for the remedies front of me is chakrung with chicken i feel like chakrung is very quintessential in cambodian cuisine only because it's made out of thrung which is a lemon grease pass pass Lemongrass paste. Lemon paste. <laughs> Lemongrass paste. I'm like tripping up because I'm nervous. Lemongrass paste that is commonly used in a lot of Cambodian cuisine. It's derived out of like kaffir lime leaves, turmeric powder, lemongrass, and galangal. So this one is a little bit spicier. Yeah, it looks like a lot of peppers um, in there. Yeah, they have a lot of peppers, onions, jalapeno. You could ask for it. Medium spicy or extra spicy. What we got? Spicy? I think we just got the medium yeah. one. <laughs> I wanted to try that. I wanted to experience that. Cambodian spice is different, man. It hits different. It's heavy. I always eat mine with like very spicy, so I always throw like Thai red peppers in there and it gives it like, it's like chef's kiss. It's cool about Khmer food because I feel like it can be like really not spicy or like spicy as f you know what I mean? I feel like a lot of cuisines don't have that range, you know? With chakrung, I love it because even with white rice, the sauce just kind of absorbs in there and then when you take a bite, it just kind of all melts in your mouth. From the first bite, I could already tell it's more spicy than regular like lemongrass, you know? Yeah, this is regular too. If you yeah. want the spicy one, I'm gonna be in trouble. I wanted the spicy. You didn't believe in me. It might ruin your day. Four contestants, what you want? Some authentic cuisine right here. The innards? Oh, this is a delicacy. We getting freaky today? Yeah, we getting super Mr. Nasty time. Deep fried, served with uh, pickled cabbage and carrots. I, like I've had intestines before, and they don't look as well presented as this. The way they present here is like they clean it really well, so it doesn't have that strong taste that you, you think of when you think yeah. intestines. No and it's like involved. sometimes I like it dirty, like I like a little, a little yeah, oh, oh, you nasty. It's like with the pickled cabbage and the carrots. They pickle it so it's like sweet and uh, sour. Right. So it works well with the intestines. Tastes like chicken. I'll get that again. Easily. Is this something that you guys eat like uh, for dinner? I think it's a good drinking food. Good, good drinking food. We call it climb. Climb is like food that accommodates drinking. It's like Whenever I do get like a single serving or like order a rice plate and I want pork intestines, I get it with mustard greens and they stir fry it all together and it's like Kiss. We order the fried calamari. The difference between this one and the other one is the batter is different. It's kind of like a tempura batter. Yeah, it's like a tempura batter. And I think the seasoning is a little bit different, and especially the dipping sauce, which is the lime pepper. You guys invent the lime pepper sauce or something? It's definitely a staple. I think it's a Cambodian staple. It's good. It's simple, but it's I trust good. you. I trust you guys in my heart. <laughs> Calamari definitely different from like Chinese calamari. It's like salt and pepper, like it's more like salty. Yeah. This is more like level. Lock. The lok is the Cambodian steak tips. So lok lok is shaking beef. Why do they call it that? They, they shake the marinade and then they usually tenderize it. They usually fold it and they start twerking and then it mixes all the beef twerking? together with the, they shake the, the ass? ingredients. They yeah, shake but that's that's the secret method. Uh, that's how the Cambodians get it. <laughs> it tastes so good, huh? But the Vietnamese have that too. Is there a difference between the two? Actually. 
very similar. The pronunciation is pretty much the same. The difference between Vietnamese and this one is that Vietnamese yeah. don't have a line of sauce. It's like influenced by like French people. It was like a French style of cooking like with the beef because like beef wasn't that popular like at that time because it was like an expensive meat. So like it's actually French influenced Vietnamese and Cambodian food. But this actually I think is probably one of my favorite like Khmer dishes. Whenever I make homemade look lot, the meat is never crispy because the restaurant stove is always like hotter and it's able to handle a higher heat than the stove heat. Whenever we make it at home, it's more of a gravy, meat sauce kind of thing. I like restaurant style quality more just for the crispiness. Look lot with the sauce goes crazy. It's like a nice balance. It has like that acidity that balances out the beef. I've noticed like look lot, it's like one of those really accessible dishes for like non Asian people to try. Spanish people from low have been like, oh, I'm craving look lot and stuff like that. And it's just so cool to me that like something like elsewhere in America that might be really niche and not a lot of people know about. And low, it's like a very common thing that's like eaten by all these different kinds of people. It's a good gateway. Yeah, gateway. Too, when you want to introduce Cambodian food, actually, I always introduce Lok Lat or Chak because I feel like the, those are good Cambodian staples. This is definitely a good safe haven, like safe spot, and then if you're feeling a little adventurous, then you graduate from there. When you introduce your people to Cambodian food, do you take them out or do you cook for them? I take them out. Well, I love cooking, but then like I feel like just being in the atmosphere of like you know a little hole in the wall and seeing like other people order different dishes, they always ask like, "What is that?" And so I feel like it's a good experience because when you see other like Cambodian families eating too, they're ordering different dishes. They're not just ordering like the deal every day or make it that. Like there's some pretty interesting dishes that go around. So I like enclosing them in an environment that they can be surrounded by different varieties. Because I think if you're introducing to Cambodian people to take them out, you're not just introducing to the food, you're kind of introducing exactly, to like, the community exactly. and like the feel of everything. There's something soothing about eating authentic Cambodian food with uh, Cambodian karaoke yeah. in the background. The atmosphere is so important to me. Like, when I'm eating, like not like fancy atmosphere, but just like feeling like authentic, you know what I mean? Like, like couples or like family just eating together and stuff like that. It makes you feel like you're really in the community. I don't know why Knox lying. He likes to go to those gentrified fusion spots with just like $15 cocktails, $15 tacos. You know, that's his vibe. He's gonna come out with local lot tacos. restaurant definitely one of the staples here in Lowell just like the other restaurant it's one of those family-owned restaurants if you look around the decorations you can see that it looks very similar very right? similar yeah. very similar Cambodian restaurants like are always popping on the weekends especially Sundays because that's where people go to get like hangover food this is one of my favorite restaurants you think they're just like grandfathered in through generations like oh that's my place or that's my dad's place so I'm gonna go there too I kind of feel that yeah a lot of times like these restaurants will get like a revamp where they kind of renovate but these old ones like Phnom Penh. I've never really seen them update their renovations or anything and that brings me back to when I eat here when I was much younger and I, I come here and it's kind of just like familiar to me. Like I feel kind of at home. I know what I'm eating. I know the food quality is going to be the same and it's great. I kind of like that about these hole in the wall kind of places. They're like comfort food restaurants. Yeah, they're like comforting and you feel like you don't have to put it on the parents. Like you could come here like in sweatpants and just like your makeup all wiped off. <laughs> like you just come here and you feel comfortable and you're just eating really good food. This yeah. is called kathil pho and it's basically what it looks like dry kathil they lightly stir fry the noodles and the meats and all the seafoods the soup is served on the side this is like kind of perfect if you want a bowl of kathil but you don't want to commit to trying to finish all the broth or having even just like a bowl of hot broth in your face on a hot day because mm -hmm. i'd be sweating sometimes no, eating real, like exactly. noodle soup sometimes <laughs> like profusely and it's really bad i know bad. my hair being tied up i'm like damn i'm only halfway into here you can see the sauce is kind of already soaked in the rice noodles so that's where all the flavor is and it actually tastes a little bit different too from like a normal bowl of kathil and there's actually a lot more flavor because the flavor is concentrated with the seafood and the meat being stir fried all together with it and then as you eat it you kind of just take a couple spoons full of soup to kind of just balance it out together here we have the special so there's beef yeah. meatballs shrimp there's some squid in there and tripe and it's served with bean sprouts in it already so if you're a bean sprout hater you have to ask for it outside of it wow. um <laughs> one of my friends whenever we order it she's like get the old coke but no bean sprouts Our friend is right because <laughs> Bean sprouts taste like pee pee. <laughs> right? That tastes bad. Jenny, you heard that? I feel like bean sprouts give it the texture that it needs. They actually blanch the bean sprouts because if you eat it just like raw straight up, it wouldn't mix well. Personally, I love my cathedral very spicy and very sour. But she likes a lot how she likes her men. I don't know. I think I'm a little spicier than the men. But also, like having that little kick in noodle soups, I feel like makes it go from like an 8 to a 10. What makes a girl go from an 8 to a 10 knock? Got a nicotine addiction.
Oh, the spice hit me later. <laughs> I told you. I, did, I try not to add too much. <laughs> that's, that's why I said the spice is in there. It's in the back of my throat. That's why I gave you that. Oh, I thought you could handle soup. spice. <laughs> I could, I just wasn't expecting it. I guess that's a good thing for the soup too. The soup is like really light. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really it's like good. really clean. Yeah, really clean. I feel like I'm like cleansing my body after, after a night of like sinning, a bunch of toxins in your body. Yeah. I feel like that cleanses it all out. A thousand percent. It looks like eye rolls, <laughs> but this is actually called hoi gum. And it's pork and jicama wrapped in. In bean curd. I know you're familiar with bean curd and pork pot. Yeah. So it's the same thing, but we're wrapping it around like a pork mixture. This is a very common appetizer that you would see at parties. Whenever I have family parties, like there's always someone that brings hoi gum. And it's so funny because it's always there. So it's kind of like the egg roll of the party too. This is fish sauce where you would dip it into. And then we have the pickled veggies too. I think like pickled veggies go with anything fried. Oh, no, yeah. Because it like cuts through like the fat definitely, and oiliness. Definitely. So, like, anything. It's like a perfect beer <laughs> snack. You know when you're like at a party and like you're full from all the food that's already there but then like, you go back a few hours later and there's like some things still left over hoi kong's always like those things that it's still there and then it's perfect to munch on when you just want a little snack too so they're like nachos yeah exactly Cambodian <laughs> <laughs> nachos No words, it's so good. The texture is kind of similar to a fish cake. I want to say because there's also a batter that goes into it when they deep fry it that gives it batter like texture inside and the crispy exterior. The consistency of a falafel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kinda, yeah. It's, it's yeah. not as dense as a falafel. Yeah. I would describe it as a more doughy egg roll. That's why I kind of call it like a meat cake. But the filling's flavor tastes like an egg roll. We got the student noodle now. The inclined is called the bio cha. It's essentially like the Cambodian version of pad thai, just stir fried rice noodles. And we got the special version, which is beef and seafood. It's all the things that you would kind of see in a pad thai, but we don't really use a lot of the tamarind. When you compare it to pad thai, you'll taste the similarities. Have a squid, big pieces of scallion too. And then again, the bean sprout. The peanuts, like the thing that makes the dish too, gives it the crunch. I think a lot of Cambodian food is heavily influenced by like the country that surround it. It tastes more like a kateo kok than it does pad thai. Yeah. I feel like if like someone never had Cambodian food before, you're like, oh, it's kind of like pad thai, they'd be like more willing to try it because like pad thai is so westernized now. But like they call it student noodles because like back in Cambodia, it was like a cheap after like school snack for like kids getting out of school. It's Ooh. cheap to make because when you have okay. kateo, you have the broth, which takes hours to make. Mm -hmm. This one has no broth, oh. you just stir fry a bunch of noodles. <laughs> Third spot Laos Thai kitchen. Got Helen here, you know, the biggest J. Cole stand that I know. <laughs> You're a really big J. Cole fan. I might have his name tattooed on me, guys. <laughs> it's not that serious, but it kind of is. But yeah. Maybe I'm you should Cole. DM J. Cole. I've tried and he's yet to answer me. But she's also an expert at this restaurant. Wait, I always wait. see her. I have to ask her here because we're here once a week. I might have been here like four times in one week. I wish I was lying, but I wasn't. I'm not. It was like a Laos mm -hmm. and Thai restaurant. Like everyone comes here, it's not just Laos and Thai people. Yeah, yeah, everybody comes here. I see all sorts of like different um, races and ethnicities coming here. And I think that's super dope about Lowell because like Asian culture is so like widespread and normalized here that like non-Asians like are familiar to at least a degree, you know what yeah. I mean? Like they'll know a couple dishes. And I think it's dope because like if you went to like anywhere else in America, like maybe outside of Cali, and you were like Laos food, people would be like, what is that, what you know? That? But like yeah. here you could ask a random Puerto Rican dude that grew up in Lowell and they'll know like yeah, what the stuff is. I know everybody always says like, I can't wait to get out of Lowell. I take that as like an insult because like I was like born and raised here. I like love Lowell. And one thing that I really 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 love Lowell is the diversity. You'll see all sorts of different races eating all sorts of different types of food. I have so many Spanish friends and white friends, they're just like, oh my god, I want to go eat kateo. They were just introduced to this because they were here living in Lowell. So like vice versa, the first time I go to my party, I'm like, yo, why are they playing bachata or like reggaeton, you know? Yeah. Like all Asians, plastic dance, right. you know, it's so normal. The deep fried chicken feet, and easy food feet, especially for people that like to drink. Every like fried that. thing that's small is good right, chicken Right, right, exactly. Right? I've actually never seen fried chicken feet before, like yeah. ever. Like, I've only ever seen it one way and it's like the dim sum way. Like, not even a lie. Dim sum chicken feet, I'm Chinese. I don't even like it. <laughs> I don't like it, my hands dirty. <laughs> 
I could see like white people would like it, just like that salt and pepper like fried mm -hmm. thing, you know what I mean? You just could gnaw on it. Yeah. Too complicated to eat. <laughs> yeah. You sure you don't want to try the chicken feet? Just take a bite. Absolutely <laughs> sure. For the camera, I'm, I'm not going to try the chicken feet. We were just going to edit her whole <laughs> thing out. <laughs> CGI. So the next thing is the lab beef, like thinly sliced beef, and then they put yeah. toasted rice powder, lime, pepper. Yeah, like yeah that. tribe. Interview. Yeah, love the interviews. You do? Yeah. Good for it's the you. Best part. Good for you. The sticky rice. I think like with lab food, a lot of the time, right? It's like sticky rice. You eat it with your hands, right? Yeah. Like, take a little bit of rice and like dip it. Yeah. Spice levels go up to the six. I wanted a six, but he was like, uh, I don't want to do. I want to enjoy the food. You know? yeah. If it's too spicy, you don't enjoy it. You're just eating it to eat it. People like the pain. That's like why people like spicy food. Releases the pain food does taste better when it's like spicy and I'm like like yeah. almost crying. Yeah. Like, I need tissues, like yeah. my boogers are running down my face. That is the best. You know, I, don't, I don't recommend that. <laughs> I'll edit that out to make it look like I ate it. So the next thing that we ordered is the Thai boat noodles. It's like a herbal broth yeah. with like beef stock and then the pieces of beef. I think they have fried porcelain on top, like two drones, yep. and like bean sprouts and noodles. The level of like spice is just like perfect. And it's called boat noodles because they serve it off boats. Me and Evan had boat noodles and I like it. It's like an interesting taste. Like I don't think there's like yeah. a lot of other soups that taste like it because it's yeah. a very like concentrated like yes, strong I was taste. Yeah, more concentrated than like steel. You think this should be as well known as like pho? Personally, yes. That's because I'm a big fan yeah. of spicy and then I'm a fan of like beef broth. It's true that not enough people know about this because while in LA and I met up with two of my homies who are Vietnamese and they tried this and they wanted pho or boom away. Mm -hmm. And I was like, nah, you gotta try the boat noodles. Yeah. And they were like, yo, this goes crazy. It's not like pho or like boom away or like a do where you always have to put stuff in it. Like mm -hmm. you can just eat this straight up. Yeah. Cause I could taste the spice without stuff. Know. Yeah, you don't have to like, literally add anything. I love like that sour spicy combo, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Too. And like my food, my candy. But I really like the noodles here. Yeah. Very good. And the last thing is the thum lao. Pretty much just like a papaya salad, but noodles with veggies, meatballs, shrimp, calamari. Laos people, they tend to like put anything that they want yeah, in it. Does. Cambodians, they just do straight up like um, papaya and then tomatoes. But this looks really interesting because I think it'd be like so many textures and I'm a big texture person when I eat, so this looks fire. Yeah. I'm a visual person, it looks good. It doesn't freak you out or anything, right? Seeing all that stuff? I think Honestly, it's exactly like what I would expect. All the different textures, like the chewiness mm -hmm. of the noodles, the crunchiness of the papaya, like it works together so well. Such like a variety of textures. It's just like really pleasing to eat, you know? Laos and Thai cuisine is very similar. Yeah, but Thai gets all the shine. Yeah. So like there's Laos. a region in Thailand, it's called like Isan, which is like right next to Laos and there's a lot of cultural similarity between the two but like at the end of the day like Thai food gets kind of all the shine you know what I mean even though some of the most popular dishes yeah. of Thai food like papaya salad comes from the like Lao people and like the people yeah. that live in that region so the big reason of that is because the Thai government like spent money on like their citizens going abroad and opening Thai restaurants so that's what made like more Thai restaurants like open up abroad yeah. but I hope that someone one day like comes in here and they don't know what Laos food is they just see Thai and they come in and they just try something different off the menu and they see how bomb it is I just want to point out that he looked up all that on Wikipedia dude how else do you learn things Are you <laughs> All right guys, we're at our last spot. We're at a hot pot spot and it's only right because it's raining outside and it's cold outside for vibes. But what's a better food marriage than hot pot and rain? It fills you up, makes you feel warm inside. It's like Bobby and Whitney. We're at, Sen we're gonna have them say the thing we'll bring both sort of over. Simon Odo. The more difficult Cambodian restaurant names, I think. That's how you know is legit. It's legit. The last time I came here, right, we got hot pot, but also they just started doing karaoke. The workers just went out to start singing. It was a vibe. You feel the ambiance. You feel like you're inside of a Cambodian home. What is the Cambodian hot pot? It's called People don't know every Asian culture got their own, own hot version pot, of hot pot. Yeah. So Yahan is like a sukiyaki based hot pot. It has like coconut milk, coconut soda. Some people do vinegar. It doesn't have like one flavor. It's like sweet, tangy, and like salty. It just hits all the notes. I don't know. Everybody makes it like their own like version in Cambodian households. Like everyone cooks it differently. I don't know how to cook it. <laughs> I know how to eat it. I've never eaten at a restaurant. It's always at home. You guys have invited us to your houses to get us, so we have to come here. You know? Why didn't they invite us? Are we dirty? Is there like a specific sauce that they have for a Cambodian hot pot. I think it's curd sauce. But like, it's so flavorful, you don't really need it. What do you say if it's tasty? Come on. Yeah, normally when I eat hot pot, I only like going to all you can eat places. Someone got to open an all you can eat Yohan place. 
the hot pot flavor isn't super like bold, but like it's like the kind of flavor which just makes you want to keep eating it. The broth definitely more exciting than your normal Chinese hot pot. I think this is the perfect balance of spicy and non-spicy. It's like tangy mm -hmm. and like a little spicy and like a little sweet. It's elite when you're standing up and eating. Uh, you have to. It's, it's official when you're doing that. Hot pot's one of those things you have with your friends and family. Like it's more like intimate. It's communal, you know what I mean? Because like you guys are all eating from like the same thing, so like you just feel closer with the people you're with. It's like a level of bonding, you know what I mean? I just met these guys and I feel closer. Now to you them. guys like at a different level of friendship. Now. I can ask them about their <laughs> deepest traumas, and they'll probably answer it over hot pot. Anything stand out to you today? Any particular dishes? The lok lak. Yeah. I really like that when you dip it into the lime and pepper yeah, sauce. Yeah, yeah. I got to try the Laos with pie salad. No, I was really about that. And the dry kathu also surprised Dry kathu, me. yeah, that's fire. Again, another dope ass food tour. Thank you to everybody for showing up. So if you're watching this, you've probably seen the first one of us, you know, doing a little food crawl low. And that was all coordinated, planned by my best friend, Kenneth Sal. But he unfortunately passed away at a very young age of 26. So he loved his community. He loved his people. He loved his culture. You know, all these things that we do now, we're trying to keep him proud, keep his memory honored. He was just a genuine dude. He invited me to his house, met his family. He was just a dude who really cared about his community, cared about his people, his family. And it was really important to showcase Lowell. And I think there's no better way to honor his memory than doing one of these again. You know, people checking out these restaurants, us just talking about this food and having these conversations. I know he would have loved that. Mm -hmm. And I feel really happy that it's something that we could do for him. The video that we did with him, that lives on forever, you know? So it's like- Forever. Forever. When people think about Lowell and they want to look up the food, they're going to see Ken, you see know? Ken, yeah. Got our friends to share a couple words about what Ken meant to them. Love you, Ken. Ken was my little cousin but not only was he a little cousin to me he was like a little brother to me and my best friend ken was a big impact in the community with his ambitions and what he wanted for the city of lowell he wanted to uplift our culture as cambodians i think i'm gonna just carry on the torch in high school ken was actually my first friend that i've ever had we bonded over food talking about our future ken was so inspirational every time i think about vibrant future ken is always the first person i imagine even talking to my mom whenever I say I'm hanging out with my friends, she's always asking, who are you going with? I'm like, oh, you know, Ken. And then I stop at Ken and she's just like, okay, that's good. He was such a huge inspiration to not only like our friend group, but to as many people in Lowen, you know, doing that first video that he did with you guys really opened up and brought in the Cambodian community and just the low culture. Yeah, Ken was definitely one amazing individual. He's one of the first few people to introduce me to Cambodian cuisine. Ken was always about like bringing people together, the community, through culture. I'm doing my best to carry on that torch. All my friends started learning about Cambodian food. I know he'll be proud that we're kind of sharing all this knowledge we have about Cambodian food and the culture. Ken means a lot to me. I think of him, I think of Cambodian food. A leader, strong individual, awesome, awesome dude. I appreciate him for everything he did for us. He was more of a leader than we realized. Basically one of our brothers growing up, you know, since high school, been doing everything together. It's his favorite thing to do, just go out and find out new places to eat. You know, He's a big brother. He taught me a lot. He was one of the smartest dude I've known. And we've always talked about any kind of things. The dude's all about unity, you know? He gets everyone together. Kenneth was like the biggest inspiration that like I ever met in my entire life. The pride that he had in this community and in the Cambodian culture not only got me interested in Cambodian culture and Lowell and all those things, but it also made me feel proud of my own culture. That sort of impact will stay with me forever. I think about him every day. R.I.P. Ken, man. Love you. Rest in peace, bro. Yeah, R.I.P. to the boy Kenneth. I'm okay. saying. I will forever grateful that I ever got to meet him, such an amazing person. Rest in peace to my dog and long live the Lotus. Remember him, mom. I got his mom to write down his name in Khmer for me. Mm -hmm. I got a tattoo on my back. You said you showed his mom? She gave me a hug, told me she loved me. Did you show your mom? I did show my mom. How'd she like it? Not as happy as Ken's mom. Uh, yeah, it's Evan Yee. Yeah. What's up, dude? Met him was when we filmed this video. <laughs> Fake food show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get mad love and love. 